So I finally got the chance to test LE audio on the Sony WF-1000XM5. Now, LE audio runs on LC3 codec, and according to Bluetooth SIG, it gives you benefits like lower latency, better power consumption, and comparable sound quality or better than the regular SBC audio codec. But is that really the case? That is what we're going to find out in this video. But before we begin, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. The truth is, even now, actually having access to LC3 is a problem because at this moment, not many devices support LC3. And even if they do, they only limit LC3 to specific hardware. For example, in order to access LC3 on the Sony WF-1000XM5, you need to use a recent Sony Xperia phone, at least the Xperia 1 Mark IV or newer, running Android 13 or later. Here I'm using the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V with Android 13, and to activate LC3 LE Audio, you'll have to go into the Sony Headphones Connect Apps System tab and select LE Audio Priority. Now, if you don't see this option, this means, unfortunately, your phone does not support LC3. Or, your phone won't support LC3 with the Sony WF-1000XM5 earbuds. But, that's not all. You'll have to unpair, then reconnect the buds to your phone in order for LE audio to take effect. Now, note that even then, if you check developer settings, you won't see LC3 audio being checked at all. Now, that's okay, because the earbuds is still using the LE audio module of LC3, and that is reflected at the top bar of the Headphones Connect app. Now you can sit back and enjoy LE audio seamlessly, right? Right? No, because at this moment, if you activate LE Audio Priority, the XM5 will not support multi-point pairing, even if multi-point pairing was activated before. Voice assistance and quick access is also, well, for lack of a better word, inaccessible. But if you connect the XM5s to other devices that don't support our C3, the XM5 will resume normal operations on AAC or LDAC audio codec. So, is LE Audio really worth losing several of these features, especially multi-point pairing? And how does it compare to simply running on the usual codecs? In terms of sound quality, you don't really get any big improvement over AAC, only that the bass is maybe a bit more thick. Apart from that, it does seem like AAC does retain more mid-range detail and sounds a bit less compressed. Compared to LDAC, there is definitely more detail in the mids and highs when using LDAC. In other words, it sounds almost identical to the most basic high compression codec as we see. Have a listen to the samples and let me know in the comments what you think. I think where LE Audio has the advantage is in terms of latency. Now, this is going to be more useful for gaming because video apps have their own latency correction anyway. So if you're watching a video on, say, YouTube, you can tell if there's any lag at all, which is different from playing real-time content like video games. And when I'm using a game to test the earbuds latency between the different codecs, there is a pretty significant improvement indeed. Have a look.
So as far as the Sony WF-1000XM5 is concerned, the most tangible benefit that LE Audio has is not in terms of sound, but lower latency when gaming. For me, this really isn't a strong enough reason to switch over from the regular codecs, because there are things that I have to give up, such as multi-point pairing and better sound quality with LDAC. And we're not really able to tap into the full benefits of LC3 yet, which involves something like AuraCast streaming. As somebody who experienced AuraCast firsthand, that to me is the future of audio that I'm waiting for. Now, if you don't know what AuraCast is, watch this video. As for the supposed improvements in power consumption, if there really is an improvement there, I will come back with another video. So get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm also on Twitter where I tweet about stuff I'm passionate about, so do follow me there. And by the way, guys, there is a video I want to show you. This is my review of the Sonos Move 2. I don't really touch speakers on this channel, but I think this is a very interesting product, so take a look.